Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. If you took a look at the thumbnail and are a loyal fan of the series, it might look a little bit familiar. So, let's hop into our time machine and take a look at this same question from a different point of view. Amy casts Electrolyze, choosing to deal one damage to each of Nick's Mother of Runes. In response, Nick activates both Mother of Runes and has them each get protection from red. Now, Amy puts the Electrolyze into her graveyard and then draws a card. At this point, Nick calls a judge and says that Amy shouldn't get to draw a card because his Mother of Runes had protection. What is the appropriate infraction, penalty, and fix? Okay, so first, if you didn't watch my video from yesterday, then you should know that if a spell tries to resolve and all of its targets are no longer legal, what will happen is the spell goes to the graveyard and has no effect. Even the effects that don't have anything to do with the targets will not happen. So Amy drew a card here even though she wasn't supposed to be able to. Now, how do we fix that? Well, first step is we'll identify what the correct infraction is. So this is a special case where Amy has done something wrong in the game state and now we can no longer revert to the game state immediately before the error because there's information we would need to do that that's not known to Nick, only to Amy. In this case, the identity of the card that Amy put into her hand. So this is a game state that cannot be corrected using publicly available information which means that the appropriate infraction is a hidden card error. Now, as for the penalty, hidden card error generally comes with a warning. Nick will not get any penalty because he immediately called attention to this error as soon as it happened in the game. And finally, we come to the fix, which is the most interesting part, especially philosophically. In the old days, any time a player drew a card when they weren't supposed to, that was a game loss because the game was now in a position where it could not be reverted to its previous state with certainty, and so a player who puts the game in such an irreparable state has to be given a game loss. It's the only really fair way to figure it out, right? Well, obviously that left a lot of bad tastes in a lot of players' and judges' mouths. So a few years ago, they added the hidden card error, and the drawing extra cards, which was a game loss in a lot of cases, now is only a warning. Of course, the philosophy behind this is really great, but there's still the practical problem of getting the players to play Magic again while still mitigating the damage done to the game state and getting it as close as we can to the game state that happened immediately before the error, or at least mitigating the amount of advantage that the offending player should get from the fact that they did commit an error. So how do we do this? Well, let's take a look at Amy's hand. We have one more card than we're supposed to in Amy's hand, and we need one card to go back into her library. So the solution that the judge community came up with is one card of Nick's choice will be taken out of Amy's hand and put back into her library. Given that Amy's library was random beforehand and none of the cards positions were known, we'll shuffle it into it. However, if one player knew the bottom card of Amy's library, for example, with a scry to the bottom, then any cards whose positions were known should stay in place and the card that gets put back should be shuffled into the random portion. Also, if Nick had some prior knowledge of what cards might be in Amy's hand, for example, a thought seize that gave him information about what she had, or what the top card of her library should have been, for example, a Jace plus two where he chose to leave the card on top, then we can use that information to help narrow down what the legal choices for Nick to pick is. After all, if Nick knows that Amy should really have a card in her hand, it doesn't make sense that he would be able to take that card away. So this is the solution that the judge program came up with. In a lot of cases, it works really well to get the game back to a state that's pretty close to what the original was, even though the original game state is not possible to completely recreate. The choice that Nick has in which card goes back gives him enough of a ability to counteract any advantage Amy might have had from getting to see the extra card, then in most cases, this works out to be a pretty good compromise. So, that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again tomorrow for another Daily Ruin, but until then, I hope you have a great day.